Okay, in this video, we're gonna do number three from the 2025 AP Pre-Calculus exam. Um, it is modeling with a trig function. It's always gonna be that until they change the course. Uh, let's take a look at the context in which uh, we're gonna do this problem. So for a guitar uh, for a guitar to make a sound, the uh, you don't need me to read this to you. At t equals zero, uh, we're two millimeters above where the resting position is, then uh, you pass through resting, then you go two below, then you go back to resting, then you go two above. So it's it's really just describing a trig, a sine or cosine graph. Um, the most relevant thing in here, you should read the whole thing when you're actually solving this, but a negative value of h of t indicates the point is below the resting position. So when we're at uh, the minimum that we get to, it's gonna be negative two. Uh, so let's see what we gotta do. I mean, we already know what we have to do. It's the same thing every time. So we gotta find uh, five points. So the first one they tell you is at t equals zero, uh, you are at your highest position two millimeters above resting. So I'm gonna say that this is zero two. Now, we gotta think about how long does it take to complete a period of this thing. So if the motion occurs 200 times in one second, so 200 times per second, that means you go one over 200 is your period. So uh, the period of this thing is one over 200. So uh, that's a very short period, um, but we're gonna use that, right? So once we know the period, we can find the increment. You take the period and divide it by four to get the increment. So our increment is gonna be one over 800, and we're just gonna count by one over 800. Now, I don't know um, how much they enforce this on this particular question. I'm gonna simplify all my fractions just in case. Generally speaking, when I'm doing this, I usually don't simplify the fractions, but if we move one increment over, we're gonna be at one over 800, and we're gonna be at zero, the resting position. Then we're gonna move one increment over, which is two over 800, but I'm gonna simplify that to one over 400. And we're at the bottom, so negative two. Then we go another one over 800, which takes us to three over 800. And we're back at resting. Then we go another one over 800, which is four over 800, which is one over 200, the period, which is good. And we're back at two. So I think those are five good points. Uh, let's see what the next part is. Although we, we kind of already know this one varies like 50, 50, it's sine or cosine. Let's find out. Um, we want to write a, a sine of B times the quantity T plus C, which is, uh, and then plus D. This is really annoying because this is definitely meant to be a cosine function. Um, but we're being asked for a sine function. So we got to work out all the, uh, the things we need. So first up, we, we can just like import this info. We know the period is one over 200. Now, 2 pi divided by b is equal to the period. So 2 pi over b is equal to 1 over 200. You get a really weird value for b. b is 400 times pi. So, I mean, that's going to happen when the period is really, really short. Uh, so we have that. Now, we need to figure out where to start to get a sine curve. Um, here is 0, right? We always start, like, in the middle for sine. Um, we can also, like, right now just kind of find the amplitude. So the amplitude is two. We don't know if we're gonna use positive two or negative two yet because we don't know if we're doing a positive sine curve or a negative sine curve. It just says a sine curve. It doesn't stipulate that a must be greater than zero, so that's good. Um, so let's see, where can we start with a, uh, a sine curve here? Um, so here, right, you're starting in the middle, go to the minimum. This would be a negative sine curve, which means we would use a negative value for a. So uh, we're gonna start at uh, one over 800 for this one, right? So uh, let's do it, right? So h of t, because it's a negative sine curve, we're gonna use negative times the amplitude, so negative two sine of, um, the value of b we got was 400 pi, the quantity, uh, and then t minus the start, so minus one over 800, uh, and then plus zero because uh, the midline or the sinusoidal axis is just uh, zero in this case. So once we have this, we can start writing down our values, right? So A is negative two, B is 400 pi. Now C is the weirdest thing uh, if you learn to do this from me because I always use A sine of B the quantity T minus C plus D, in which case my C in my class would be positive one over 800. You just have to always make the comparison, especially if you're one of my students. So they're using T plus C, as far as I know, they will always use that. So if it's T plus C, then C must be negative one over 800, just to match it up, and then D is zero. So this is what I would give for A, B, C, and D. I'm not gonna do the whole problem, but you could totally have started at three over 800 and gotten a positive sine graph. Um, and if you did that, 
your values would just be two, 400 pi. C, so it, it changed from negative to positive two, and it changes from C is negative one over 800 to C is negative three over 800. Everything else is the same. I think they'll accept either of those because either of those goes through all those points. Now the next two parts are always the same. Um, refer to the graph of H in part A. So I already like imported the graph and I just like labeled the Y values. It's positive two, then zero, then negative two. We need that because we're gonna look at this thing on the interval from uh, G to J, right? So I'm just gonna highlight that so that we know what we're looking at. We're looking at this interval. And on the interval, which of the following is true about H? This is basically a multiple choice question. You can see uh, the values of H are negative, so H is negative, and you're definitely decreasing. So uh, H is negative and decreasing. That's all you gotta do. Now the next part, again, always the same. Describe the concavity of the graph of H and determine whether uh, the rate of change of H is increasing or decreasing. So if you say concave up, you have to say the rate of change is increasing. If you say concave down, you have to say the rate of change of H is decreasing. Um, so this is again, kind of like 50-50 if you know what you're doing. Uh, this is definitely concave up on this interval. So I would just say the graph of H is concave up on the interval from T1 to T2. And we just have to write it. So if we say concave up, we better say the rate of change of H is increasing. That's the entire problem. Pretty good problem. Uh, the period of this thing is crazy. But anyway, I hope this was helpful and good luck.